Okay, we're going to talk about the cell theory. So there's a video here for you to um, watch. There's a link to that video on your uh, Cami note sheet. So make sure that you look at that video. A lot of people like this video. So we are going to look at the contributors to the cell theory, the authors of the cell theory, and then the cell theory itself. So we have here our two contributors to the cell theory. Both of those uh, contributed to this by their work with microscopes. So we have Robert Hooke and then Anton van Leeuwenhoek, the Dutchman. Um, and then the authors, what are considered the authors of the three-part cell theory, we have Schleiden, Schwann, and Virchow. And then at the end of your notes there, we'll uh, put together a little timeline uh, so we can kind of see uh, where everybody came uh, in terms of time where where in the world when in the world did they do their work so first we have Robert Hooke and um, Robert Hooke himself a pioneer in microscopes and there's a lot of different things that we can talk about Robert Hooke in terms of claims to fame but um, one of his claims to fame is that he's the first person to use a microscope to see cellular structure. Now, people at the time, and Robert Hooke was no different, they looked at bugs. And you can see here, this is one of his drawings. He's also known for his drawings. Um, this is a drawing of a flea that he looked at under the microscope, and that's what people looked at at the time. They looked at bugs. Um, he is uh, known for this little book. Uh, called Micrographia, uh, which contained his drawings. So this one of the flea and this one, pretty famous, this one's been on the SOL before. This one of the cells that he saw from the cork, uh, from the bark of a tree. Now, what he used to look at these structures is a very simple, but very ornate, very pretty compound like microscope like we use today. Uh, it's compound because it has two lenses. It has the eyepiece and then it has the objective. It has a single objective. And if you look at it, um, there isn't any type of coarse adjustment knob or fine adjustment knob. So if he wanted to get uh, the lenses closer to his specimen, you can see the specimen holder there at the bottom, he would literally have to undo the whole contraption and move it closer or move it further away. His light wasn't as reliable either. So you could see that little uh, system there of light shining onto the specimen is using an oil lamp shining that through the water of that flask. But it is a compound light microscope, just uh, not with all the bells and whistles that we have on our microscopes today. His other big claim to fame is that he gets credit for giving cells their name, and he gave them that name because what he looked at, he looked at plant cells, and we're going to see that plant cells are more boxy than animal cells, and they reminded him of the rooms that monks live in in a monastery, and those rooms just happen to be called cells. Now we're heading on to this Dutchman. This is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. That's not the actual pronunciation. I do have a link there if you want to see how his name is pronounced. He is a Dutchman. And how he came into this game, uh, he wasn't a scientist, um, a traditional scientist, the way we think of scientists like Robert Hooke was. Um, his family, their work was in textiles. And because of using these magnification lenses um, to count the threads in the textiles, that's kind of how he got into this. Um, he started crafting his own lenses and that's one of his claims to fame is that he made his own lenses and he made them pretty powerful. Now what you're looking at there, this is his little teeny weeny microscope. There is the lens. You can see there's like this giant eyebrow right there. <laughs> this is not a giant. Uh, this microscope is really, really small. It doesn't look like a microscope at all. It looks like a, some type of medieval paddle. But he did craft his own lenses and some of them as high as a 270 times magnification. Now that's not too shabby. With our microscope, any single lens 
does not go above 40 times magnification. And we use compound light microscopes. This is a single lens, but with our compound, uh, we can only get up to 400 times magnification if you're using the high power objective. So 270 is not too shabby. Now his other big claim to fame, uh, he is known as the father of microbiology. So if you say biology, you're talking about life. And what is different between uh, Anton here and Robert Hooke is that he looked at living cells. Robert Hooke looked at these non-living cells, these cork cells from the bark of the tree. So it's kind of similar to looking at like your fingernail. Um, but uh, Anton here looked at living, uh, currently living cells, kind of moving around. Um, he's the first to look at a lot of things. That's why he's the father of microbiology. He's the first to see bacteria and the stories go that he looked at bacteria from the scrapings of his teeth and his family's teeth. So we're talking about plaque, kind of gross. Um, he's the first to see living critters in pond water. So uh, that would be protozoans, um, which that name there, uh, depending on how you uh, interpret that prefix, pro or proto, um, you could be thinking about first and then zoa is referring to animal. So protozoans um, like amoebas and paramecium, they're all protists, uh, but none of them are animals. Um, they're animal-like in that they're consumers. Um, he was also the first to see white blood cells, red blood cells. Red blood cells supposedly came from himself when he nicked himself uh, shaving.